First, let me, uh, I want to thank all of the uh, members of Congress who took time out of a very, very busy schedule to participate with us, Adam Schiff, Frank Wolf, Chris Smith, and Howard Berman, um, and also, of course, Finn and Dick for their terrific leadership in the NED. And I also want to thank Paula for being with us, David Kramer for joining us, and also the NED staff for everything they did to make this event what it is. It was a very complicated event to pull off. I have a special message that I want to read from about Tom that I think is relevant to this entire event. It's from His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, who considered Tom, and I quote from the message, a truly great friend of the Tibetan people. And of course, Tom was also, as has been said, a great friend of the net and of everything we're working to achieve. In his message, His Holiness speaks of Tom as a determined speaker of truth, untiring and unwavering in his support for the important human rights issues of our time, a person who contributed greatly to highlighting the plight of the Tibetan people. And he especially recalls Tom's words last October during the presentation to the Dalai Lama of the Congressional Gold Medal when he urged the Chinese government to respond positively to the Dalai Lama's, quote, efforts to resolve peacefully the problem in Tibet. What has happened since then only confirms the wisdom of these words. The uprising in March, its violent suppression by government forces, the harsh denunciations of the Dalai Lama and the rejection by the Chinese government of repeated calls for an independent international investigation into the protests and their aftermath. A statement issued on March 22nd by 22 leading Chinese intellectuals, among them Cheng Biao, whom we have honored this evening, echoed the words of Congressman Lantos calling for dialogue with the Dalai Lama to eliminate animosity and bring about national reconciliation and warning that one-sided propaganda and a posture of aggressive nationalism, I'm quoting from the statement by the Chinese intellectuals, would only aggravate ethnic tensions and harm China's international image as well as its long-term goal of safeguarding national unity. Regrettably, these words have also not been heeded, as shown by the Chinese government's intention to have the Olympic torch pass provocatively through Lhasa on Saturday. But there is another kind of torch representing an entirely different and more peaceful set of values, and it is the torch held aloft by the goddess of democracy a replica of which we have just presented to Chen Guangcheng, Tong Biao, Li Heping, Li Bai, bai Guang, Zhang Jinghong, Yu Fuxin, and Hu Shigun, on behalf of all those who are fighting for human rights and democracy in China. The goddess is a creation, a Chinese creation, adapted from our own Statue of Liberty. But it is now a universal symbol of democracy. Eight years ago, on the 10th anniversary of the stolen elections in Burma, the NED presented a, a wood carving of the goddess to the National League for Democracy of Burma, whose leader, the Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi has been detained or imprisoned for most of the last 18 years and whose birthday will be observed in the Congress this Thursday by Tom's Human Rights Caucus. Significantly, this replica of the goddess, which I hold here, was carved by a craftsman in Nigeria soon after democracy was restored there following a similar stolen election in 1993. The NED has also presented this universal symbol of democracy to activists and leaders from the Czech Republic, Nicaragua, Serbia, 
Kosovo, Russia, Rwanda, Mexico, Hong Kong, Nigeria, Algeria, Somalia, Uzbekistan, Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, Sierra Leone, Sudan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Thailand, and Egypt. And of course, even before this evening, we have also presented the goddess to Chinese activists, to Hong Dong Fang, who is here with us now, as well as to Wei Jingsheng and Wang Dan. And in addition, a 10-foot tall bronze replica of the goddess stands just a few blocks from here as a memorial to the millions of victims of communism in countries around the world over the last century. One day, I believe, as has just been said, the goddess will stand again in Tiananmen Square. The crushing of the protests there 19 years ago did not destroy the spirit of democracy in China or the movement that it continues to inspire. On the contrary, that movement stands on the foundation laid in Tiananmen Square and proceeds from a higher level today because of that uprising and the sacrifice of those who perished there in 1989. The activists we have honored this evening are proof of that. May we be worthy of their courage and determination and provide the international solidarity that they need. Let us rise to that challenge. Thank you all for coming this evening.